Yo, what it do, y'all? It's your boy King here, the Great, coming at y'all with another video. And I found this to be pretty interesting. Now, the locks is going to be a hot topic for the next week or so. So I was going on to Kali, and I found this piece of information here. That the that Puffy came up with the Let the Locks Go campaign himself. Yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and read y'all the tweets for this guy that goes by the name of Jason Rodriguez. He's a rap journalist and he executive produced that documentary that Bad Boy did a year back called Can't Stop, Won't Stop. So, it says here, hold on, hold on one second. All these pop-ups and stuff going on right here. But, before I go on, in the meantime of this downloading, I just want to say that it is great to see Jada Kids finally getting his appreciation and finally getting his flowers along with Styles P and the Locks. That's the beauty behind these verses is to give extra appreciation to the people that have been putting it down for the culture. And Jada's streams have gone up tremendously. And now he's celebrating the 20 years of Kiss the Game Goodbye. It's a beautiful thing for the culture, man, despite everything that's been going on for this past week. Oh, and um, Usher's joint... Um, 8701 turned 20 today. Man, this was a crazy time in the business, man. It was so much fun around that time, too. But going on to the topic, hold on, I'm trying to get it, man. I think I got it right here. Okay, so he says here. The Hot 97 interview, that was sometime after they left Bad Boy. I believe that was related to their publishing, not recording contract, as that was still binding business between them after they left Bad Boy for Rough Riders. They eventually resolved that, and Kiss was on MMM. He, hold on. Anyway, hold on. Damn. He said, making the dot means you have to make decisions on storyline, what to keep and what to throw out. And you know sometimes it depends where the talent takes it. Andre wanted wanted to tell the whole label story. The director initially wanted to tell his side of Puff caring about his acts. Puff, for his part, obviously isn't perfect. But there was a lot of story, including from 112 in total, talking about how generous he was with his time and intelligence towards them. Again, didn't make the final cut. I can't pretend to know the details of their contracts, but each of the each member of the lock separately on camera and on record said that their bad boy deal was fair. But during the reunion performances in Brooklyn, Puff did everything he could to treat Mace with respect and assure the crew tend to, to Mace like the star he was on the label. Did the same for Kim. These were things that didn't make the cut either. Mace, that's a more complicated matter, that he was a high-profile artist on the label and his importance in Post Big meant a lot. The third story, unfortunately, didn't make the final cut of the film. Ultimately, the lot secured their release from the label. I don't know the specifics, but I do know Puff, Puff owns some publishing. By the time I speak to Styles about it, he confirmed it, said the deal was fair, he was just, just young and fought it. Kiss said he was crying, it was so funny. Like, Puff really shitted on him to the point where Styles tried to pick up a chair and toss it at Puff, but Kiss started cracking up because the chair was OD heavy, and if you hear Kiss's voice, he goes, the chair went from here to there, and he pointed out maybe six inches. There was a there was a heating confrontation between them and Puff when Styles first got upset about the deal. There was a conference room, and Styles started popping off. Kiss said Puff came back at P talking wild greasy. They were kids, and Puff was maybe 27, hottest thing in the business. Jada said he was cool with it. Styles was the one that was upset with the deal. He rolled with P. Sheik later told me the exact same thing without me saying what Kiss said. I'm sitting in disbelief. I'm astonished looking at them like, y'all crazy. They were confused at me looking like it was nasty. I keep thinking it's not me, it's you. Hi, it was all love. I asked them about their deal. Kiss even told me at one point during Summer Jam he was worried because the fans got too rowdy. Banging on Puffs Bentley, yelling, let the lots go. He thought Puff would be upset, but Puff loved it. Puff told them to make it a street movement. Said, it, if the people want y'all on Rough Riders, make them say it. So that was the Let the Lost Go campaign birthed by Puff. Wow. Now, as much stuff that we said about Puff, I always gave him his due. Even when we did the interview with Doug Young, 
He knows his shit when it comes to this business. He knows how to craft great records. He knows what people want to hear. His business tactics, I'm not really a fan of. But when it comes to marketing at that time and when it comes to really knowing what the public want, the man is sharp. And if he orchestrated this, this is a very sharp move. He basically Vince McMahon the game. But I just thought I wanted to share that with y'all. I'm going to leave the Twitter links right here for y'all to read. So this is King Eric signing out. Subscribe, hit the like button. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Holla.